You're so cute. Isn't that delicious? The seed of a new idea for a toy can happen in many different ways. And in the case of uh, Lovabella, we had a team of outside inventors bring us a concept. It was very rough and raw, and it took us years of working together to perfect Lovabella in a way that would be uh, suitable for play with girls. In the 1980s, one of the hottest toys around was the Cabbage Patch doll. In the 90s, it was Tickle Me Elmo that took the throne, and more recently, Razor Scooters and the Nintendo Wii were what every child wanted. The toy market internationally is worth $25 billion US, and the pressure of creating the new hottest toy is intense. According to Michelle Liam, a toy industry analyst at NPD, the real test for toy companies come in the last quarter of the year, where 45% of sales take place. So where do new ideas for toys come from, and how do these creations become breakaway successes? We went inside Spin Masters, the creator of the smash hit Hatchimals, to see if their most recent creation, the Lovabella doll, will top the charts once again. I mean, Lovabella was an invention that came to us uh, with someone saying, look, I've got a new way to do a face of a doll, a new way to do movement that would allow us to go beyond just the open and closed mouth and you know the stuff that we've seen over and over again. This is something that so we can bring a baby alive. When I first saw Love Abella, uh, my comment was she's not ready for prime time because the face, the, the technology of having the face be beautiful and work with all these expressions and the motors, etc., cetera, um, it wasn't dialed in yet. The team continued to work and work and polish it. And then we saw a video and it was like, <gasps> She's ready to put in front of girls and see what they think and because uh, she was pretty enough. And so when we, our first research with girls, we knew we had a winner. They went nuts in the, that very piece, uh, first piece of research. When I looked at Lovabella, I, like, I thought it was, it was great, but I didn't have the same feeling about it. There's been a lot of electronic and motorized dolls done along the way. We had to break past all of that, and then what's that one moment that when you look at her is different than anything you've ever seen in your life? Forget the motors and the technology. We do that because if we just made a regular doll that was just uh, a pretty static doll that that we could, it, that's been done a million times, so we have no point of difference. The inventing team was made up of a mime and a puppeteer. They were also very good at electronics and, and, and software programming. But the thing about a mime is that they know how to evoke emotion through facial expressions, and a puppeteer knows how to evoke emotions through body movement. And so they brought those two perspectives together to create the most lifelike doll that we've ever seen. You want to get it as close to real as possible, but not too close where it's too real. It still needs to be a doll. It still needs to be a fantasy aspect to it. So we looked at real babies. We looked at animated babies. And we came up with something that we could then put in front of hundreds of people. And that's how we kind of honed in on kind of the look and the feel. We knew the most important thing was to have that mouth that moves so differently than anything else. So to do that, we had to invent a new way to do a doll face. You know, there's a number of motors inside her. And they can move in very limited ways. So what we work with the inventor is, what's the best combination of movements that would elicit that feeling when you look at her that she's alive? So we do look at how babies move and how their arms are moving up and down. And there's not a lot of real dexterity there. But what we're trying to do is put enough in that when you see it, you just go, wow, that's moving different than anything I've ever seen. It's not your standard doll that's been out there before. And then on top of that, we layer in the voice all the different ways you can interact, how she reacts to you, so that if you, you know, you put your hand over her eyes and she says peekaboo, like, that's incredible. So Lovabella is no one-trick pony. Most baby dolls just have one or two features, and then it's a pretty mechanical um, interaction where you do this, you get that response. Lovabella is unpredictable, just like a real baby. So she has over 500 different responses made up of different combinations of words and facial expressions and and movement of the of the arms, etc. And so. 
you do different things and you'll have a different reaction and it keeps you engaged hour after hour because it never gets old. <laughs> Not every toy is a success. Some are just expensive flops. In 2014, Mattel tried to compete against Hasbro's Nerf Blaster with a new product line called Boomco, but the brand power of Nerf could not be outgunned and remains king of the hill. Today, many top toys go through a rigorous development process. The Lovabella took three years of design and testing before it was ready for store shelves. Toys is very unique in that you have to create a ton of magic for little cost. This baby doll is more expensive than most dolls in the category. Uh, it's a lot more expensive than a baby doll that you can get at the store that doesn't have this amazing um, feature uh, set. At the same time that we're developing the play pad and we're also working on the cost, right? So we, we would take an early um, sample like this and we would cost it. And then the cost would tell us what the retail needs to be. And then we would, we would start to massage that cost. The doll category is uh, one of the very largest. It's one of the top three biggest categories in the entire industry. With Lovabella, the level of break frame um, play that you can have with this is going to grow the category because it's going to invite older, uh, older girls and boys into the fold. Um, typically, uh, younger children ages three to six would play with baby dolls. We think that Lovabella and Lovabo have the ability to age up to eight, nine. Um, so we expect the category to grow with her launch. In the 1920s, the breakout toy of the year was the yo-yo. It was called the Wonder Toy and it gained mass popularity in 1928 after Pedro Flores ran the first yo-yo contest in California. It has sold millions of copies since. But toys today are increasingly sophisticated with high-tech sensors and motors, and the ability to connect to mobile devices has grown 47% year over year. Despite this, creating timeless appeal is still a top challenge for toy makers. Physical play will never go away. No matter how much kids enjoy their screen time, they're very, very much entranced by, what, by what's in the physical world and that tactile quality of real experience. So we, we think that physical toys will coexist with screen play for the long haul. No kid cares about technology. You're not selling technology. What you're selling is interaction, relationship, um, realism, um, fun, laughter. Kids focus on play pattern. They want to know, like if you take something like a Hatchimal, right, to them it's the hatch. The fact that it hatches with a motor and electronically makes no difference to them, right? What's amazing is that it hatches, it's alive to them. We get stuck in electronics and technology and motors and batteries, but what is Cabbage Patch? Nothing like that, right? What's the magic of Cabbage Patch? That every doll is different. What the technology allows us to do is tell a story. So when we do something like a Zoomer dog, or a Zoomer show pony, or a Lovabella, there's a story in there. There's more than just push a button and something happens. It allows a depth of play that wasn't available years ago. On average, consumers will spend about $50 to $100 for big ticket under the tree presents, and about 70% of fourth quarter sales occur from Black Friday through Boxing Week. Lovabella will be up against strong competition such as Fingerlings, Monkeys, and LOL dolls, but at $140 each, is Lovabella too expensive for shoppers, or will we soon see them listed on eBay for hundreds more than their retail price, just two weeks before Christmas due to their high demand? You certainly try to get the toy to the point where you, you say, wow, this is a great toy, but as far as knowing whether it's going to be a hit or very successful, a lot of times you don't know that. We think we may be uh, uh, short on quantities uh, of Lovabella this year. The response has been incredible. So we'll be marketing Lovabella and Lovabo next year. And we also have some brand new innovations in the works um, for future years. So nurturing play is classic play. It's never going to go away. We think that Lovabella and Lovabo will be around for a long time.